Hello, this is the section 3.6 lesson. Uh, sometimes in a random experiment there's more than one random variable that we might be interested in and we may want to know some a probability of some combination of those random variables. And so to, to uh, calculate such probabilities we're going to use this idea of joint distributions. And we're going to start off talking about discrete random variables and a joint probability mass function or joint PMF. Uh, a joint PMF is described by the function a uh, little f. Uh, a little f of x, y is defined to be the probability that x equals little x and y equals little y at the same time. So to illustrate this idea, let's consider this simple example. Suppose we have a bag that contains a 1 ounce marble, a 2 ounce marble, and a 3 ounce marble. And in our random experiment, we're going to choose two marbles with replacement. So our sample space consists of outcomes that look like this. Maybe we get the 3 ounce marble followed by the 1 ounce marble. Or we get the 2 ounce marble followed by the 3 ounce marble. Or maybe we get the 3 ounce marble and then the 3 ounce marble again. So there's a total of nine outcomes in my sample space. So the two random variables we're going to deal with here are x, which is the weight of the heavier marble, and y, which is the weight of the lighter marble. So let's calculate a couple of values of the, the joint PMF. So for instance, let's do f of 1, 1. By definition, that's the probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1 at the same time. Or in other words, it's the probability that the lighter marble weighs 1 ounce and the heavier marble weighs 1 ounce. Well, that can only occur when both marbles I get uh, weigh one ounce. So there's only one outcome in which both x and y equals one. So the probability of that happening is one divided by the size of my sample space. So one ninth. Let's calculate f of two one. So that's the probability that the heavier marble weighs two ounces and the lighter marble weighs one ounce. Well, that can happen when I get the one ounce marble and then the two ounce marble, or the other way around, the two ounce marble followed by the one ounce marble. So there's two outcomes for which x equals one and y equals, or x equals two and y equals one, so two divided by the size of the sample space, that's nine. Another example, let's calculate f of one, two. So by definition, that's the probability x equals one and y equals two. So that means the heavier marble is one ounce and the lighter marble is two ounces. Well, that's impossible to happen. And so that probability is just zero. So we can summarize all the values of our joint PMF in a table such as this. So across the top, we list our values of x, one, two, three. Across the side, the values of y, one, two, three. And in the middle, we list the, uh, the values of the, uh, of, the, of the joint PMF. Now these numbers here on the, the, the right column and the bottom row we'll talk about in a minute. But, so there's our joint PMF described in the form of a table. So now we might also ask a question about just the heavier marble, for instance. We might ask what's the probability that the heavier marble weighs three ounces? Maybe we're not interested in, in the lighter marble at this point in time. We just know something about the, the heavier marble. And so a question like this motivates our de definition. We call the marginal distribution. So the marginal distributions of x and y are denoted this. So we have little f sub x of x, which is defined to be the probability that the random variable x equals the number little x. So that we call the marginal distribution of x. And then likewise, we have the marginal distribution of y f sub capital Y of little y is defined to be the probability that capital Y equals little y. And so to illustrate how to calculate a value of uh, the marginal distribution, let's consider the marginal distribution of y uh, at 1. So that is by definition the probability that capital Y equals 1. So think about how can that happen. Well, that could happen if x equals 1 and y equals 1, or x equals 2 and y equals 1, or x equals 3 and y equals 1. 
and um, so those uh, outcomes are all disjoint and so we can add up their individual probabilities so the probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1 is little f of 1 1 likewise this is little f of 2 1 little f of 3 1 and then we just read their values off the table f of 1 1 is 1 9th f of 2 1 is 2 9ths and then f of uh, 3, uh, 3 1 is also 2 9ths and we add those up and we get 5 9ths so that is the probability that y equals 1 now if you note what we did here to calculate that probability is we simply added up the numbers in this row and we put that sum over here in this right hand column likewise if we want to find the probability that y equals 2 we can add up these numbers and we'll put that sum there we want to find the probability y equals 3 we'll add up those numbers and we put the sum there and then by similar arguments if we want to find the probability that x equals 1 we'll add up those numbers we'll write our sum there probability x equals 2 we add up those numbers probability x equals 3 we add up those numbers and uh, so we write our values of the marginal distributions here along the margins of this table that's where the term marginal distributions get its name so now we're going to give a little more formal definition of the the joint PMF and the marginal distributions and uh, so this starts off by say let um, let's let R sub X denote the range of X and R sub Y the the range of Y so then R X cross R uh, R Y is the set of all possible values of X and Y so then the joint PMF is a function that satisfies these three properties first property says simply that every value of f has to be between 0 and 1 second property says that when we add up the values of the joint PMF over all values in this set R that should equal 1 and then the third property really tells us how we're going to use the joint PMF it says to calculate the probability that X and, and Y take on some values in a set we're going to add up our joint PMF over all values of X and Y in the set now we've given a formal definition of our marginal distributions as this so the marginal distribution of F uh, of X excuse me is this and we can find that by adding up the values of the joint PMF over all values of Y likewise the joint uh, or the marginal distribution of Y is we add up our joint PMF over all values of X so to illustrate uh, the calculations of marginal uh, distributions and uh, a use of a joint PMF let's consider this uh, this joint PMF given here so we have our two fun our two random variables X and Y X has range 1 2 and Y has range 1 2 3 and uh, here's the joint PMF given in the form of a formula so let's calculate the marginal distribution of Y and so by definition what we're going to do is add up the joint PMF over all values of X so in formal notation we're going to evaluate this so we're going to plug in X equals 1 and then X equals 2 do that arithmetic simplify it and there's our joint P our, our marginal uh, PMF for Y likewise for the uh, marginal PMF of X we're going to add up our joint PMF over all values of Y so we're going to plug in Y equals 1 then Y equals 2 then Y equals 3 do that arithmetic and there's our marginal distribution of, uh, of X now let's calculate a probability suppose we want to calculate the probability that X plus Y is greater than or equal to 4 so what we're going to do is add up our joint PMF over all values of X and Y that satisfy this inequality so in formal terms this is what we're going to evaluate now in more informal terms what we can do is simply look at every single pair of values of X and Y and ask ourselves does that pair satisfy this inequality that X plus Y is greater than or equal to 4 if it does then we're going to plug that, that pair into our joint PMF and add them up if not 
then we're not going to plug them in. So if we look at the first pair, 1 and 1, we say it is 1 plus 1 greater than 4. No, it's not, so we're not going to deal with it. Next pair, 1 and 2. Does 1 plus 2 greater than or equal to 4? No, it's not, so we're not going to worry about it. Next one, 1 and 3. Well, yeah, that sum is 4, so I'm going to plug those values into my joint PMF. I look at my next pair, 1 and 2. Nope, sum is only 3. Next one, 2 and 2. Yes, the sum is 4, so we're going to plug those in to our joint PMF. And the last pair, 2 and 3. Yeah, the sum is greater than 4, so we're going to plug those in. And then we add up those three different values of the joint PMF, and there's our probability, 43 over 54. Now, our next definition, we're going to extend this idea of uh, a joint distribution to uh, continuous uh, random variables. And the definition here is going to look very similar to that for discrete random variables, only we're dealing with integrals rather than uh, summations. So let x and y be two continuous random variables. The joint probability density function, or joint PDF, is a function f of x, y that satisfies these three properties. So the first property says that the function has to be uh, non-negative for all x and y. The second says that if we integrate the, uh, the joint PDF over all values of x and y, that should equal 1. And the third property tells us how we're going to use this joint PDF in order to find probabilities that x and y take on values in some set. We're going to integrate the joint PDF over that set S. And then likewise, we define the marginal distributions uh, in this way. Um, the marginal PDF of x is denoted f sub x of x. And we're going to integrate the joint PDF over all values of y. And likewise, to find the joint PDF uh, or the marginal PDF of y, we're going to integrate the joint PDF over all values of x. So let's, uh, let's look at the, this joint PDF. So x and y are two, discrete, or two continuous random variables. x takes on values between 0 and 1, and y takes on values between 0 and 2. And the value of the joint PDF is equal to 1 half over those values of x and y and 0 otherwise. So first, let's uh, verify that this function satisfies the, the first two properties of a joint PDF. Well, first of all, note, note that uh, this function is always greater than or equal to 0. So that's not an issue. The second, we need to integrate the, the joint PDF over all values of x and y. And uh, so the joint PDF is 1 half. We're going to integrate for x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2. And we integrate that using basic calc 3 techniques, and we get 1. So it satisfies the second property. Now, next, let's find the, uh, the marginal PDFs. And so the marginal PDF of x says that uh, the definition says we're going to integrate our joint PDF over all values of y. So integrate with respect to y. y goes from 0 to 2. And uh, then that's just equal to 1. Likewise, the marginal PDF of y is we're integ integrate with respect to x over all values of x, which is 0 to 1. And there's our marginal PDF. Okay. Now, look at uh, one thing this tells us is that um, notice that x takes on values from 0 to 1, and it has a constant PDF. That means that x is uniform over that interval. Likewise, y takes on values between 0 and 2 and has a constant PDF, and so it is uniform over that interval. So x and y all by themselves are uniformly distributed. Now, what could we do with those marginal PDFs? Well, don't let that, that qualifier marginal scare you. Marginal simply means that we're using this PDF in the context of another random variable. So these marginal PDFs we can use just like any other PDF that we've used earlier this chapter. We can use it to calculate values of the random variable. So for instance, if I want to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, by definition, I'm going to integrate 
its PDF over all values of interest. In this case, I'm interested in x between 0 and 1 half. Let's integrate its, its uh, marginal PDF, which is just a constant 1. Integrate that, and I get 1 half. So again, these marginal PDFs aren't any different than the PDFs we've worked with before, except that they're being used in the context of another random variable and another distribution. Now, let's illustrate how to use the third property of a joint PDF to calculate a, um, a, pr a probability. So let's, for instance, find the probability that x is less than y. And so by the third property, we're going to integrate the joint PDF over all values of x and y that satisfy this inequality. And so to help us set up this integral, it might be helpful to um, sketch a graph of all the possible values of x and y. So x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2. So this rectangle here represents all possible values of x and y. Now we're interested in those for which y is greater than x. So we're going to divide this region up into two subregions with the line y equals x. And I'm interested in um, the region for which y is greater than x, and so that's this region up here. So I'm going to integrate my joint PDF over this uh, two-dimensional region. So in mathematical notation, this probability is equal to the double integral of the joint PDF. We'll integrate dy dx. So we're going to set this up just like a calculus 3 problem. x goes from 0 to 1, so those are my limits there. And we say for a fixed value of x, what are the smallest and largest values of y in terms of x? Well, y goes from x up to 2, and so that's the limits there. And uh, then I integrate that, again, using basic calculus 3 techniques, and we get our probability of 3 fourths. In our next definition, we're going to define the idea of independent random variables. And this definition is very similar to the idea of independent events that we talked about back in uh, chapter 1. Events were independent if the probability of their intersection was the probability, uh, or the product of their probabilities. Well, uh, independent random variables, or random variables are said to be independent if their joint PDF is the product of their marginal PDFs. Now, informally, uh, independence means that uh, the value of one does not affect the value of the other. Just like back in Chapter 2, independent events, the occurrence of one had no effect on the probability of the other. So let's look at the, a couple of examples that we've done here. In Example 2, we calculated the marginal, PDF, the marginal PMFs. Uh, to be x cubed over 3 and y over 6. Well, if we, mar if we uh, multiply them, we get x cubed y over 54. Well, that was exactly the formula for our, our joint PDF, joint PMF, excuse me. So that means that these two random variables, x and y, are independent. So informally, what that tells me is that if I know the value of one of the, va the random variables, I don't know anything more about the value of the other variable. In example 3, we calculated our joint PDFs to be, or excuse me, our marginal PDFs to be 1 and 1 half. If we multiply them, we get 1 half, and that was exactly the value of our joint PDF. So again, these two random variables, x and y, were independent, are independent by definition. Now, to, to show that two random variables are independent, we need to first have their joint PDF and then find the marginals and show that the product of the marginals equals the joint. Well, in some practical applications, we can use the idea of independence to find the joint PDF. And that's what we're going to illustrate here in this example. Suppose a man and woman agree to meet at a restaurant sometime between 6 and 6.15 p.m find the probability that the man has to wait longer than five minutes for the woman to arrive. And uh, so, first of all, let's define our random variables. So let x and y denote the number of minutes past 6 p.m. that the man and woman arrive, respectively. So x is for the man and y is for the woman. 
Now we're going to make two assumptions about these random variables. First of all, we're going to assume that both of them are uniformly distributed over the interval 0 to 15. Now, based on the given information, that seems like a reasonable assumption. They're going to meet somewhere between 6 and 615, and it's kind of reasonable to assume that all of those values are equally likely, more or less. So this is a reasonable uh, assumption. Now, that tells us that the distribution of x is just 1 over 15, and likewise the distribution of y is just 1 over 15. So they have the same marginal PDF. And again, they take values between 0 and 15. Second assumption is that they are independent. So that means that their joint PDF is simply the product of their marginal PDFs. So it's 1 15th squared. So there we got a nice simple formula for their, uh, their, for their joint PDF. Now, we want to know the probability that the man has to wait longer than five minutes. Well, in terms of my random variable, that means that the woman arrives more than five minutes after the man, or y has to be greater than x plus five. And so, by a third property of a, a joint PDF, to calculate this probability, we're going to integrate the joint PDF over all values of x and y of interest. And um, so to set up this double integral, we could uh, sketch a graph similar to what we did in the previous example. Uh, x goes from a 0 to 10 in this case, because if the man arrives after time 10, he's not going to have to wait uh, longer than 5 minutes. Again, assuming that the woman really does arrive by 615. So that's why this goes from 0 to 10. And then for a fixed value of x, y goes from uh, x plus 5 up to 15. And then we integrate that using standard calculus 3 techniques, and we get our probability of 2 ninths.